Hi, I'm Mitch Woodward from North Carolina Cooperative Extension, and here we are in downtown Raleigh at a stream site that we fixed back in February. And what we're going to do is show you what we did, and then we're going to show you what it looks like now and if we need to do any more repairs. Okay. Here we are on a balmy day in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we're gonna show you how to simply and effectively fix a stream using natural materials. Lately, with all the rain we've been getting, not a day goes by that we're not asked, how can I fix my stream? Local small urban streams that have erosion issues. We don't have any plants growing here, and this is an open invitation for this water that's coming from near downtown Raleigh to kind of carve this out and head toward the house that's not very far over here. If you want more information on this, we can give you a link to our workshops at NC State, where we actually have hands-on training, and you can be certified in stream bank repair. And then also we have a lot of materials online that you can see and then learn more if you're interested in doing this. One thing I wanna emphasize on stream bank repair is you have to use native materials and native plants. You can't use plastic. You can't fill the stream bank in with rock or concrete uh, without a permit. That can be done. You can't put in-stream structures in. And we don't need those here. But you can't put in-stream structures or any kind of hardened structures in. You have to use natural materials and native plants. So speaking of natural materials, we have coir. This is a fancy word for coconut. So here we have coconut fiber, very stout will hang around for a number of years while the plants grow. So this kind of cuts down on our erosion on our stream banks uh, while we let the plants grow and kind of take over. Uh, various hand tools that we have here. These are hardwood stakes, not to be confused with the live stakes here in the background. These are hardwood stakes. We drive a nail in so that the matting, it holds the matting, but does allows, doesn't allow the matting to slip off. So we have that, we have some pins. We won't use many of these, but here we have some uh, giant staples. We'll staple the matting in temporarily and, and hold that in place while we put the, the wood stakes in. And here is the star of the show, are the stars of the show. So these are live stakes. Now you can purchase these at native plant nurseries. These happen to be uh, elderberry, and these are silky willows, about two feet long typically. And these are native plants. They are prolific rooters. So what we are going to do basically is insert them in the stream bank up to about this level, so about three quarters to two thirds, and they will produce a multi-stemmed woody shrub that will just load this bank up with roots. Because the goal here is there are no roots here on this stream bank. This is open to erosion. If we can get what we call tow wood, wood at the toe of the slope to hold the soil in place, that would be probably the best practice that we could, we could have here, and these will allow us to do this. You can get these in North Carolina at native plant nurseries. There's many in the area that have these. These are installed in the dormant time of the year, typically November to early March, and they will root from cuttings and make new plants. What's cool about these is they, are, they will grow into six or 10 foot uh, tall and wide plants. Then when they get large enough, you can clip from those mother plants and you can utilize those clippings like these and install in other, area of, other areas of the bank. So you'll have a sustainable system. And these are fascines. This is the same type of plant material. Again, elderberry and silky willow, but these are the ends of the cuttings and we're gonna lay these in the bank using another technique that we've employed in situations like this. And these will root at a, you know, all along the length of these. So we're gonna install these in. So we're combining today a few techniques, the live stakes, as well as the whips or the fascines, and we're gonna use a little matting to hold it all in place. We're gonna fix this bank for about $250 today. So we'll show you how to do it.
So we're wrapping up now. We've got our, our stream bank protection in. Uh, I'm not really concerned about this because we have rocks, we have some vegetation. Leave the stump, it's gonna re-sprout. Leave it because the roots are doing some, some good. Don't pull those out of the bank, leave those. Now you can trim them back. And of course here is our repair, live stakes, coir, the whips and the fascines right at that point where we come around that meander bend. So really armored that now with this native material. So over the next months, uh, as we go into summer, we're gonna keep that wet. That's gonna sprout out. We have some that are sprouting out now. It's almost March here, and Monday will be March. Keep that wet and keep those actively growing this first year, that's critical. Once they make it past the first summer, then, then we're good. We're gonna develop that root mass and hopefully we'll have a real mass of plants here. Here we are looking at this site about six months after we installed it this February. Overall, we're very happy with the result here. In spite of the numerous summer storms that we got, the, the water level was almost up to the top of bank. In fact, it probably did on a, several of the larger storms go up to the top of a bank. And this is an outside turn, so we have a lot of force here. You can see that this is what's left of the matting, still doing its job after six months. It's there, it's held in by the stakes, that's really good. Let me show you the kind of growth you can expect in the first year. These are the fascines we put in. These are alive and rooting. You can see these. They've got a foot, sometimes two feet of growth. And you can see here that they're alive and they are rooted, they are in there. This one is a stake. Looks like it sprouted, but didn't do so well. But look at this one. Here's a stake that we put in the matting. You can see the matting down there. And here we have about a foot or two of growth on this. So I would call this excellent. And this is just gonna spread out. These get about maybe three to six feet wide, three to six feet tall. And I think this fall, we're gonna come back in and we've got some bare spots here, not unusual. And we're going to put some more stakes in where the summer storms kind of took that out. It's only been six months, so we'll come in this December, January, February, have a workshop, put some more of these in, and we'll get a more lush growth here. So overall, very happy with this result.